Hey Lenormand lovers, it's Lisa Young Sutton with another Grand Tableau video for you. And as you can see, this is an 8x4 plus 4 format, which is my standard reading format. And I chose another reading that I performed last year so I could provide you with all of the uh, client's feedback. Now, this reading was for a woman who's a client of my grooming shop. And by the way, if you can find clients or, um, you know, yeah, clients to read for, that you have regular long-term contact with, it's the best way to learn because you will always get feedback from them. And I performed tons of free readings the first year uh, just, just for lots of practice. And what I love about reading for my grooming shop clients is that I see these people on average every four to six weeks. So I am constantly getting updated on their lives and therefore updated on their readings. Okay, so this woman will call her LS. Her question was, will we move residents within the next year? So let me start by telling you the three questions I ask everyone before I lay a grand tableau for them. Question number one, are you married in a steady relationship or dating anyone? Question number two, are you employed, looking for work, or a student? And question number three, do you have any children? And the reason I ask these three questions is so that I know how to treat the, uh, the partner card and the child card and my work card, which my work card is moon, and the book card, which can be education and school. All right, so that is why I always ask those three standard questions. All right, so the next thing you wanna consider that this is a question regarding moving, okay? So you want to consider cards of change and movement, okay? Versus cards of stagnation and no movement. Sit, stay, right? No movement, slow movement, okay? All right, or you could say cards of stillness. All right, so as with all grand tableaus, we are looking for proximity, which means what cards are close to, you know, other important cards. Clusters, which is what groupings of cards do we have? Do we have cards uh, grouping together of, of a similar theme, right? That kind of thing. That's clusters. And connections. How do cards connect to each other? You know, like how does she connect to the key? Well, she connects to the key through snake and man, okay? That kind of thing. So that's what you're always looking for in a grand tableau. Now, houses. If you read houses, and I do, unless I'm reading um, a straight method of distance grand tableau, but for the most part, I always read houses, but it's secondary information. Primary information always comes from the cards that fall because that's the only thing that is completely random. Houses cannot change their position, only the cards that fall within them change. So decide from the start where your primary information will come from and stick to it and the cards will always know how to fall. Oh, and one last tip before we dive into the reading is that a lot of people protest grand tableaus because they say they don't have any room. Well, as you can see, here I have a, a ruler here. As you can see, um, I always, always, always use mini decks in, for grand tableaus. All right, out here for you metric people. All right, you can see how small these cards are. And again, I have one of uh, Lorraine's mats here from uh, Divine Apothecary on Etsy. That's her store. And this board here, okay, this is a 24 by 18 inch chalk board slash dry erase board on the other side. They're also magnetic. I have two of them. I love these things. And what happens is when I lay a grand tableau out, because I generally, you know, keep it there for a while, because most of the readings I do since this last year with the pandemic and everything, almost all my readings now are online or, you know, distance readings, right? So I, I might lay a GT and I may leave it here for two days and keep revisiting it um, or two hours or whatever it is. but. My point is that when you lay the cards on this mat, 
you can move the mat around. Now, the problem with just being on the mat is that when every time I would pick this mat up to move it, all the cards would like smush in the, in the middle. So then I thought, wait a minute, what if I lay it on this, uh, on one of these boards? And oh, well, look at that. I can move it around. I can move it from room to room. I can just move it out of my way. Even if you have a client in front of you, right? And you want to lay grand tableau, lay it out and then you'll be working with it. And say they ask some other question and you want to lay a small spread, well, just move this out of your way, okay? And take your other deck and, and lay a small spread for them, that kind of thing. Okay, so there's my tips of the day. All right, so let's dive into the reading. Now, what is the first step in a grand tableau reading? First three cards. Why? Because they begin the story. They are just like card number one in your box spread. All right, so what do we have here? Well, look, I mean, this is a question about moving, right? So we have communication regarding moving is coming fast. And I can already see that Ryder is heading to um, clouds. So I know that the, the you know, where the, where the Ryder is heading tells you what the communication is about, right? That he's bringing, what the news is about that he's bringing. So we already know, I mean, this is in Ryder. <laughs> so this is, he's, he's delivering a message. It's coming fast and it's not good regarding moving, okay. Okay, next I look at the four center cards. Now you disregard the fate line when you're looking for your center cards. So it's these four cards because this is the heart of the story. This is just like the center card in the box spread. So from this I can see that the key to ha the house, the key to moving is in danger of being cut. And her husband's playing a, a significant part in this and he's maybe not quite on board, all right? Either that or he's just knocking himself out, but you know, for now, I know that there's an issue here, the husband's important, and there's danger regarding finding a solution for this. Okay, next I look at the four corners. So the four corners are framing the story. So what we can say is, you know, we have loyalty and we have communication. So that, remember, this is her reading. So she is loyal to what she's communicating, all right? And then we also have energy and we have um, slow, slow um, growth and, um, you know, something that's just taking root, something, the health of this situation is going to need care and time to thrive. So she's putting energy into making this grow. But, but this as a corner card, this tree tells me that it's not going to happen fast. So right away, I could see that, all right? All right, now I check the fate line because the fate line is the bottom line of the story. So we can uh, compare this to the exit card in the box spread, card number nine, right? But unlike the box spread, because this is using the full deck and we have so much information here, we don't wanna jump to a conclusion yet. So we wanna make a first analysis of the fate line and then we revisit it at the end, okay? so. What can I say from this uh, fate line is that every time an attractive option is offered, it's blocked, okay? Progress will require strength and fortitude. And so far, this is in alignment with everything else I've seen so far. So like I said, I, I write that down and then I come back to it at the end. All right, now I wanna look to see where the cards fell. And I always start with my primary significator card, which is her, which is LS, right? And I wanna see where she fell. Now, remember, I always read left to right. The fact that she's facing left gives me secondary information, but it's not primary. My primary flow of energy is always left to right, okay? So, from her position, I can say that she's, she's in the third row down, so she's not in complete control. She's also in the next to the last column, so she has a lot to deal with before she can reach her goal, okay? So she's not, you know, if she were over here, she'd be in charge, she'd be driving it forward, that kind of thing, but she's, she's almost at the end here, so she still has a lot to deal with to make this happen. All right, so now that's just what her position tells me. So now I wanna look at her box. I'm gonna look at the cards that are touching her, her closest proximity to her, okay? So what we can say from this is that 
regarding what she desires, there's something wrong, okay? Something is not quite straightforward, okay? Doesn't mean, you know, don't think of wrong as necessarily horrible, and, but, but it tells you that there's something a little off. Something is a bit askew, okay? Now, her, her new plan is stagnating. Okay, her new plan needs needs time and patience and that kind of thing. All right. Now the new information that's coming to her, that all of the new information that's coming to light is proving problematic. Okay, there's difficulties. Okay, and then the, the ship is her journey, right? What's it countering here? The the uh, the long term card, the card of many steps, the card of red tape and bureaucracy and all of that stuff, right? So there again, I knew that there would be uh, many steps before she, she uh, completes her journey, we could say. All right, so I ne the next thing I couldn't help but notice was that she and her husband are, are facing each other. They're only one card apart in the same line, right? And what's between them? The heart. So I right away, I knew that he wasn't a big problem. I mean, he, he obviously wants to make her happy. They both, they both want to be happy. They both want kind of the same thing, you know, that... They're on the same page for the most part. So I knew there was no big issue between them. And then I, I had to see what fell in their houses. And I see that he's got house in his house, right? So he's fine where he is. She's the one that's burdened. So at that point I asked her, I said, is it you that really wants to move? And, and he, he's not really, you know, he's just kind of going along with you. And she said, yeah. She said, she does not like where she is. She's the one that wants to move. So that just confirmed confirm the cards. All right, so let's look at her line of sight now. And once again, remember I read left to right, all right? But she gets the row. This is her, it's her reading. This is the primary line of sight for her is her row. So what she's doing, let's see what she's doing. She's talking to everybody. She's chattering up a storm, talking to everybody, anxiously trying to figure out a way to make this happen. Now, Lily and Tower is significant because Lily is a, uh, it's like a, uh, it's a long-term card. They're both, you know, this is a long-term house, long-term card, uh, you know, slow moving, many steps, um, be patient, all that. So these two are very significant that they, they came together. And here we have Whip and Garden. Now that, that comes comes into uh, play big time late, later in the reading, but that told me that there is some kind of discord in her environment among the people that she's dealing with. Okay, so I wasn't sure yet quite what that meant. So I, I but I wrote it down and I knew I was going to go back to it. Okay, so I then couldn't help but notice that Scythe is in Birds right above this, and Birds is in her line of sight, which happens to be in the house of moving. So I could not help but notice that, and I thought, you know what, she's, she's got to stop talking about this move so much and, and cut to the chase and deal with this. All right, so we will come back to that. All right, next, I want to check his line of sight. So remember, it's her reading, she gets the row, he gets the column. All right, so he is trying to open up every every opportunity, right, to make this happen, whoops, to make this happen for his wife, but it always ends in despair, right, doesn't it? And he can see that, you know, the, the goal is just starting to take shape, but it's, you know, he, he's not, uh, he, he can see that he's not going to make this happen in the time frame of the reading, let's put it that way. Okay, I, I could already see that just from his, his line of sight. All right, so now remember that he's one of the, the central cards in the heart of the reading. So I knew he was important. So now I want to look at his box. I already read hers, right? So now this is his. All right, so what we can say is that he's knocking himself out trying to give her what she desires. Right, but every every door he opens is met with a problem, met with uh, despair, you know, a burden um, that that must be endured. Um, look at this new house. So he he would love a new house, 
all right? But, but the journey is slow moving and it's in, in danger, okay? There's some danger regarding, um, you know, this journey. All right, so I write that down and I move on. So now I check movement cards versus stagnant or still cards. So the, the two primary moving cards are Stork and Rider, right? So look how far they are from her. They are very far, they are out of her reach. That's the first thing I notice. But look at all the cards of stillness or no movement. All right, these are her very near cards, right? The box around her, and then you go out one and you have the near cards to her. All right, everything else is far and very far. All right, so she's got, she's got slow growth, she's got uh, slow movement, she's got many steps to get there, she's got, I mean, the snake kind of coils around itself, so it's not really going anywhere, and she's got, this is no movement, this is sit, stay, no movement, okay? So you can see all the cards that have grouped around her, and the fast moving cards and the card of options and everything are far from her, all right? So, I then notice, what do I notice then? That, okay, so she, she's, getting, she's getting the message, all right? So I, I'm still focusing on movement, moving, right? I mean, that, that is the question, all right? So she's getting the message as letters in Rider. What message is she getting? Well, what's in the house of letter? right? Because we have letter in rider, right? Rider is bringing the message regarding moving, okay? I want to know what the message is. So because letter is in rider, I want to see what's in letter and it's my work card. So I ask her, is your job holding you back from moving? Bingo, okay? That was it. She, all right, this is what she told me. She is a hairstylist. She has a tiny little salon in her home. It's so small that she can't even add another chair. So she works on her own. She can't even hire anyone. She can't expand her business at all. There's also nothing to sell because it's not like she, she has a, a client. I mean, she has a clientele, but she doesn't have employees. She doesn't have a location. You know what I mean? It's just a, a room in her home. So if she moves, she's going to lose her clientele. Now look, remember this? Remember I said we would come back to this? There's the discord in garden, okay? Now also what's in the my workhouse tree? Unhealthy situation, needs time, needs care, right? Okay, so it's all coming together. Then I can't help but notice this. She thinks she's chained to the small house, right? And this is in the house of coffin. Okay, she's feeling, and look where Coffin is. She's feeling boxed in. I mean, what's in her house? Clouds. What's in clouds? Coffin. What's in Coffin? Dog. Okay, so there, there's, you know, a, uh, a linking of the cards, right? She's, she's, she feels she's chained to the small house. She feels boxed in. Um, she, she's stagnating all of that. This is, there's problems. Um, you know, this is all coming together to tell me the story that, this move is not gonna happen this year. Remember, she's asking, will it happen this year? No, it's not. All right, so now I want to help her, you know, to, to move forward, right? I don't wanna just say no. I don't wanna just answer her question, no, sorry, you're not gonna move. I, I need to help her figure out how she can make this move happen because we already see that stork is in clover, right? Clover's in tree, tree is in her moon, which is basically at her heel, right? You could say that's the hidden issue for her, right? So I knew that, that the answer to make this happen is work. I then noticed that she's standing on book, okay? Book and sun, what does she need to see clearly? All right, there's something she's not seeing, right? So I say, okay, so what was your plan if you moved? Like, how were you planning to earn a living? I mean, she's not of retirement age yet, you know? So then she tells me that she used to be a business proposal writer. Like, that's what she did when she got out of college. She became a hairstylist 
so that she could work from home to raise her kids. That's how this all started. So her, re not her retirement plan, her, her plan when she moved was to get back into business proposal writing. But she's been away from this field for so long and she's been out of touch with technology for so long that she needs to re-educate herself. She needs to get caught up. She needs to learn new things. She needs to also make new connections. Look at, we got book and sun. We have sun and ring, ring and book. So there's, there's a connection there, All right? She needs to commit to putting energy into learning about this field. She needs to take all the steps. I mean, remember, stars is in her house of goal. And what's in, in stars is tower. So she needs to start the process going, start taking the steps to educate herself to get this new business going in order to move. All right, so whew, I now revisit the fate line with all the new information that I've gained. So what I told her then is that for now, she has to bloom where she's planted, all right? The flowers have been turning to stone, but then the stars come out and give her new strength. So, you know, that, that was like my first look at it. And then I said, you need to protect your dream, okay? You need to, well, you need to stay strong, okay? and endure the struggles. Remember, this is the house of, of enduring struggles, right? In order to reach your goal, which is taking shape if you do this, right? If you can deal with what's in here, you can get here, okay? Now, remember, this is money. This is the house of finances, right? So there's financial hurdles. So what's important is that she accept assistance and offers to deal with this okay to make this happen so what was the answer to the the initial question remember the initial question was will you move this year the answer was no you won't be moving this year but start working on a solid career plan because it can happen if you really want it to because she has enough positive cards in the right places to tell me that this will happen for her as long as she does this okay she needs to start putting the plan in motion. And the feedback is that, no, they didn't move last year, and now they're talking about moving in two years because she is now uh, educating herself. She's taking courses in the computers and whatever else she needs to take. And, but the, the, she said the scales are starting to tip. She's starting to now see that the new business is going to replace the old one, okay? She's just got to keep working on it. She's got to commit to it, put the energy into it, and it'll happen. So that's, uh, that's how that ended. So that's it, my friends, and I hope you got a lot from this. Again, this um, I wanted to show you this one because the last Grand Tableau video I did was pretty straightforward, right? It was quite straightforward. As soon as you looked at it, you almost immediately saw the answer. Not so with this one, right? Sometimes there's a lot more to the story. And I think this is one of the problems with small spreads is that you just don't have enough cards to give you the full story. And you can jump to the wrong conclusions. <laughs> and let's face it, I love grand tableaus and I want you all to love them too. So <laughs> I'm gonna keep, you know, promoting them. Um, and I, I hope this was helpful. And as usual, if you have any questions or comments, um, just leave them below or message me. And I will see you in the next video, which will be another Grand Tableau video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye, everybody.